Hello everybody and welcome to the first official episode or part of college cooking slash keto college cooking. Today we're making some low carb chicken tikka masala. I'd like to make it very clear early on that this is uh, not my recipe. Uh, you can find the recipe link in the description below. I made it a few days ago. Very good. Without further ado, <laughs> this is my college kitchenette and we're going to start making some chicken tikka masala. Alright, so for starters, you're going to need the following spices, measurements of which I'll get to when we use them in the video, and that'll be the first thing. You're going to want some good old coriander, some cumin, you're going to want some paprika, good old cardamom here, and the uh, cayenne pepper, lastly some nutmeg. Now you will also want some ginger, the recipe says minced ginger, but I found that ground ginger works just fine. Now if you're still watching, I greatly appreciate it, and I hope you really want to uh, succeed in cooking this recipe. And I just want to make it very clear that I'm not a professional cook, I am not any sort of professional chef, I just, it's, I find it kind of fun. I made a breaded chicken a while ago and it turned out well and I really want to cook this semester of college. I kind of have to because I'm doing the keto diet for whatever reason. So we're going to get to the rest of the ingredients now, but I just want to throw it out there. This is not a professional video by any means and I'm aware of this. So the recipe says to use avocado oil, but you can also use olive oil. They are pretty much the same uh, thing when it comes down to it. Top off the spices, you're also going to want some pepper and some salt. What kind of salt you use is up to you. I just went with the Trader Joe's branded stuff. Yellow onion. I use my leftover half from the last batch. Good old cilantro for the final touches and flavoring and whatnot. Lastly, for when we're making the sauce, you're gonna want some cream. I went with the heavy cream and it worked just perfectly fine. And some tomato paste. And of course, Now when I first did this, I kind of eyeballed all the spices because I didn't have any measuring spoons, but now I do. So if you want to, follow along. But the most important thing to keep in mind is that you keep everything proportional. Starting off, we're gonna go ahead and do uh, two teaspoons of coriander. Two teaspoons of cumin. Crack open the paprika. And you're gonna go ahead and do one and a half teaspoons of that. And lastly, you're going to do a fourth teaspoon of nutmeg. Stuff is strong, so try not to overdo it. Finish it off, you're going to go ahead and throw in your half teaspoon of cayenne pepper and your one fourth teaspoon of cardamom. Now that you got all your spices in one bowl, you're just going to stir them up a bit. The recipe does say to whisk them, but this worked fine for me last time. The main idea is that you have them all in one solid mass. Like, you don't have a bunch of red in one place and a bunch of gray in another place. Sift it up and down a bit, and you should have a, like a, a nice, nice chunk of, of spices. So once you're done with that, um, you know, not an exact science, just take 20 seconds and stir it around. I'm going to go ahead and put that to the side. We're going to use that when we mix it with our onions. All right, our next step will be to cut up the onion and then cut up the cilantro. I currently have a half onion left over, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. I found that you only need half an onion for this recipe, but you can use a whole one if you so desire and love onions that much. So let's cut. First, make sure you just cut off the end that you didn't cut off before. And you can chuck that. Real quick, I'm gonna grab a second bowl just to put the onion in when I'm done. So the way you cut an onion, believe it or not, does matter. But for this, we're gonna be cutting it just down the side into little like semi-circle slices. And take your onion, just make sure you, you just kind of pop them apart into their loose bits. Putting our onion bowl aside along with our spices. Next up, we're gonna bring out cilantro. If you have like a handful of cilantro, you really don't need that much. The recipe says like a, a whole cup or something. And honestly, like it's, it's not wrong in saying that you need a bunch, but also if you're making just one batch of it, you don't need that much because it's more or less a sprinkle toward the end of the recipe. Breaking off our stems. I'm actually not sure if I'm supposed to do this, but it just doesn't feel right to have stems and food. Go ahead and bunch it up to one, one big clump. You're just gonna go with your knife. Switch hands so you guys can kind of see it. Again, I'm not professional. <laughs> Just chop down, making really, really small bits. If your cilantro is getting red though, I'd check your hands. Go ahead and grab a small glass or cup or something. You can just sauce those right in there. And then put it aside. So I imagine it's good practice to wash the cutting board between each use, but now that we've done our veggies, we're gonna go ahead and do the chicken now. Now the main idea behind this one is you cut the chicken into the small like half inch to one inch chunks, just bite sized pieces, whatever that means to you. Now recipe says to use chicken breast, get a bunch. I mean, chicken can be used for anything. If you're doing keto as well, chicken is one of 
<laughs> the easiest and best things to do. It's got no carbs, so much protein, a little bit of fat, but you can get that with cheese. Just this here is 1.18 pounds. So I'm gonna cut all of this up right here um, because I do have a little extra in each of these bowls and we're gonna cook up a storm. All right, so there's probably a method for how to cut these into little bite-sized pieces. All right, so in the messy way that this has been done by me, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna have your four slices now, and I'm just gonna cut them down the side again, making them into just some chunks. When you're done, you can just go ahead and put your chunks onto a plate. You're gonna to wanna to have another plate for when you cook these, but I'll explain that in a moment. And then you're gonna go ahead and cut up the rest of the chicken. Now that you have your mound of chicken, you can finally put it off to the side next to your stove. Uh, you're gonna want a pretty big pan for this one. If you have a deeper pan, that's totally fine. We are gonna be pouring a cup of heavy cream into this, uh, so to be warned. But just to quickly outline the rest of how this is gonna go. You're gonna have uh, your chicken, and you're gonna pretty much just pan grill or pan cook it all, whatever the word is, with some olive oil. And you're gonna cook each bit into new chunks, so that's why you gotta get a separate plate, so you can put those chunks on there. So then we're gonna throw in the onions and saute those up, wait till they brown. Throw in the spices for like a minute, two minutes, get the uh, spices nice and toasted. And then we're gonna throw in the cream, and you just you keep mixing that up until it's a nice consistency. And then you throw in the chicken, get the chicken the last bit of heat, and you pretty much have your dish for like three or four meals. All right, having set your pan to medium heat, it says a tablespoon of avocado oil slash olive oil. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit in there, about a tablespoon, maybe less. So I definitely made a little bit more chicken than I had to, but we're gonna cook it all up. Uh, and I don't wanna put my camera next to the pan so oil splashes on it or anything and you know, hurts the lens. So um, I'm just gonna show mid progress updates. So essentially we're just dunking in the, chi uh, the chunks. Don't be afraid to do it in batches. I'm gonna do a second one here. Uh, because you don't want the pan to get too crowded. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move from medium to high to simmering to very low. You're gonna go ahead and take your onion slices. You're gonna go ahead and drop them in the pan. Whee! While these are sauteing, I'd recommend getting the tomato paste and your cream ready. Making sure those onions are still browning, you're gonna go ahead and take your tomato paste, and you're gonna take about a one-fourth cup of tomato paste. You're gonna go ahead and take your one cup, and fill it with cream. I have almost perfectly a cup. Wow, that is impressive. All right, don't do what I just did, because that's gonna overflow. <laughs> Pretty happy with how they're looking right now. Some of them are still looking a little uncooked, but they will continue cooking with the spices. So. And I go ahead and get your old bowl of spices, give them one last stir, and just dunk them all over. And these you're just gonna sh go ahead and stir into the onions. So you wanna toast the spices, uh, and you're gonna see everything of this sauce is gonna come together in just a minute. Now you're gonna take your cream, and let's see if I can do this without spilling it. An impossible feat. Already spilled it. Oh wow, I am very impressed with myself. All right, and you're just gonna dunk it in. Now. It might be weird. Why am I putting cream in a pan? You're gonna stir this around, and pretty much almost immediately, you're gonna take your tomato paste, and you're gonna sauce it in there as well. Stuff's thick, so I took a little scoopity scoop, and I helped it out a little bit, get out of the cup. Now, the really important thing with tomato paste that I would highly advise is that you really make sure to chop it up. Because if you get a clump of tomato paste, then you're gonna taste it. So the cream, as it heats up, will thicken, and the tomato paste will also help toward the consistency. But within minutes, like even now, right here, this orange part, you're gonna start seeing this turn very, very orange. That is largely thanks to the tomato paste and the spices. So I'd say keep stirring, make sure everything is like an even throughout color. What I did last time, and it worked out quite well, take our cumin, I'm just gonna shake that in there just, just a little aggressive bit. <laughs> and we're gonna do the same. We're gonna do the same with our cardamom. Alright, so do keep tasting your sauce, keep updating it with spices, whatever you need to do. I definitely put too much tomato paste in, that's my bad. The last thing I mentioned earlier that I never used that some people might be wondering, hey, what about the ginger? Just sprinkle that on in there. It's just use like a tablespoon or something, but I just kind of 
kind of throw it in there. The college cooking lifestyle is just eyeball everything. All right, and to bring it all together, you just drop in the chicken. Be careful you don't uh, spill the sauce anywhere. I've definitely gotten some bits over here. So as you finish stirring it up here, wow. um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and sprinkle in your earlier chopped cilantro. I would sprinkle a little bit of it um, now. I'd say like half of it. And then when you're done and you're serving it to yourself or to your peers or your roommates or whatever, you can sprinkle a little on top of their little plates. Make it a little green. A little green with the contrast of the orange. All right, and that's it. So I think the first time I did this, I feel like I really nailed it because it was really good. But I think I overdid it with the tomato paste. So I tried to throw in some more spices, more cumin especially, more cardamom, but I think I saved it. The onions and the cilantro will also play a huge role. So just throwing some fresh cilantro on top when you have this is really great. It keeps for a while. Now, if you came here for keto or whatever, the carbs are in the sauce. The tomato paste, I think, has a total of six, six grams of carbs, so a lot of that comes from that, I'd imagine. I'd say the portion size would be around six to 10 pieces of chicken with a good dose of sauce on it. Again, it's not an exact science, so I'd give yourself a leeway of, I don't know, maybe maybe like two grams of carbs or something. The, the total protein, like total carbs in this meal was not the whole thing, but uh, based on a serving size. So that's it. I know the video is a little boring probably because I'm a little low energy today, but if you did enjoy, thanks for watching. I hope you made it. If you did, um, send me a picture or something, leave a comment. I don't know, it's a good meal to make. It feeds quite a few, especially if you make a lot and I'm definitely making more in the future. So I recognize that the largest flaw in this video was that I tried too much to make it perhaps educational or fun and mixing them just did not go well. So in the future, I'll definitely make it more fun like that breaded chicken video, but I hope to make more videos and keep learning. I don't know, I looked up like good chicken recipes and this came up. So the, again, the recipe link will be in the description. But without further ado, thanks for watching, have a good one, and don't forget to eat awesome.